So we're at the final stretch of creating checklist. There are only a few features left to go. And one of the features is payments. So this is how it looks in the mockup of client. So five tasks per checklist are free, but if you want more, you need to upgrade your plan. And we decided with client that we would use Stripe for payments. And since we would use only Stripe, I decided to use Laravel Spark which is the official solution from Laravel team and Taylor Otwell to create your SaaS application software as a service with monthly plans or yearly plans and Stripe integrated directly. So this is probably the easiest way. Some of you may think probably that I advertise the paid solution instead of teaching you to do that step by step. But actually recently I've changed my mind on using tools instead of doing something manually. So it seems like expensive in some countries to pay $99 per project or $199 per unlimited project. But if you count the hours that you would spend to do that manually on whatever hourly rate, that pays off pretty quickly and saves you not only time, but just the nerves, the mental energy to focus on other stuff. And I'm not talking about Spark, I'm talking about any tools that would pay off in the long run. And I'm not affiliated with Laravel Spark, I don't get paid for this video to use Spark, but I just choose that tool to make my own life easier and to deliver the project quicker to the client. And also one notice, I've agreed with the client that the client would pay off that $99. So it's their investment, not your investment. So if you are a freelancer or an agency and you use some paid tools, you need to discuss with client, maybe they would cover the cost. They may be interested in investing more to have the project quicker or better. So in this video, I will purchase Spark, install it, and actually I will use it for the first time. I've read about it a lot. There is a great video by Taylor Otwell about the upgraded Laravel Spark version because it's a new version. It was released in 2021, absolutely new. And on the top, you can see the link to Spark Classic. It's called the previous version. And the previous version of Laravel Spark got some heavy criticism because it was heavily based on Vue.js, which is not very convenient to everyone. It was hard to customize and it was quite opinionated as they call it on Reddit or elsewhere the criticism of Laravel Spark. So in 2021, they released totally new version, which works differently. It serves as a separate kind of admin panel, billing panel on whatever project that is under the hood. So in your Laravel project, you may have whatever features with whatever languages, Vue.js, Livewire, frameworks, whatever. It just needs to be Laravel project with like user model and really similar core Laravel stuff. And Spark lives on a separate URL. So you go to slash billing and then you land on Laravel Spark, which is a separate tool. So it doesn't stand in the way of you coding your project. It's kind of a separate thing, which I think it's a great idea. And this is what I want to try it out in this video with you guys. So to purchase Spark, we click get Spark. I fill in the form for registration. Isn't it familiar? It is from Laravel, just remote breeze, right? So we register. And then inside I see some updates for Stripe version and Paddle version. By the way, Laravel Spark also supports Paddle as a payment provider. It's pretty new, but became really popular, especially in Europe. And also benefit of Paddle is that it handles PayPal as well. Stripe doesn't do that. So you may go for Paddle as well. Licenses, and probably we need to purchase the license. Purchase license, and I will call it checklister license, accept the terms, purchase license, probably it will ask for my credit card. Oh, and by the way, this is how Paddle looks like. So they use Paddle under the hood to purchase Spark, interesting. And it means that I can pay with PayPal, which is my preferred option whenever I can. So I will pay with PayPal now. Okay, and it is processing and I have purchase licenses, processing your order. Should I refresh the page? Not sure yet. Oh yeah, it is refreshed after like five seconds and I have the license for Laravel Spark. Now let's install it. If we click the documentation here in the new tab, we land on the introduction. And for those of you who haven't seen new Laravel Spark, I totally encourage you to watch this video. It's a kind of an overview by Taylor Otwell himself. So to install Spark, we scroll down probably this thing, installation. I will zoom it in a bit so you would see. Installing Spark via Composer. So let's copy and paste the repositories here into our composer JSON. We open composer JSON and in the repositories, we don't have that repositories, do we? No, we need to create that. Okay, so let's, for example, do that after scripts, repositories like this. Then what else? You may add Laravel Spark Bottle or Spark Stripe. 
we do need Spark Stripe. So Laravel Spark Stripe in our require list. So Spark Puddle Spark Stripe. I think it should be also version 1.0 and above. And then we just run composer update and it will ask for our password, for the password to email and password to Spark dashboard. Or alternatively, we can access the API token. This is actually also a lesson for you how to protect your applications. So how to enable the code download, but check the license. So it's a lesson about licensing as well. So we have API tokens as well, and I could put API token in the file auth JSON, but I will not do that. I will just go for the prompt on the composer update. Let's try it out, composer update. And in the middle, it asked for the authentication. So I entered my username as email and password, and also chosen not to save the credential in auth JSON and composer update then runs successfully. Great, so we installed Laravel Spark. Let's see what else do we miss in the configuration. So it's something about auth.json and we need to run Spark install. So we've installed the package itself. Now it needs to run some jobs to install everything. Scaffolding installed. That was quick. Great. Now we need to run the migrations probably by Spark and we run them. And what do we have? Spark columns to users table and then separate tables for everything related to subscriptions. Okay. And then we need to configure Stripe billables. But for that, we would go to specifically Spark Stripe documentation. So there is a section about Spark Paddle, but we are using Stripe here. So we go to configuration of Stripe. And of course, we need to put the Stripe credentials into our environment file in .env. So let's copy and paste everything here into our .env file. And currency, let it be USD, currency locale EN, let's leave it for now. And then we need Stripe key and Stripe secret. We get them from the Stripe dashboard. I've opened my Stripe dashboard and viewing test data should be enabled for testing. And it will give you two API keys, which is publishable and secret. So I will copy and paste them now into my ENV file, click to copy, and I've put them in my ENV file. Also, there is a webhook secret, but we will talk about webhooks a bit later in this video. For now, let's just configure general Stripe. So we skip the webhooks for now, configuring billables. Billables is who to charge, basically user. By default, in 99% of the systems, the billable is model user. If you have other models like model team or model customer or something like that, you can customize that. But by default, the billable is user and we may find that out in config spark PHP file. If we scroll down, there's an array of billables should be here down below. Yep, here. So billables user model is user class. And next we need to configure that config spark with our plans ID, what to subscribe to. So billables we have configured. Also there's more configuration possible about billables, but we will leave it as default. Billable authorization is also default. Defining subscription plans. Now this is the most important thing. You need to create the plan on Stripe as product. So we go to products, still on testing data. We add a product and every product may have multiple plans. So we will get to that in a second. So let's call the product checklister, description optional. Pricing is standard pricing of, for example, $9.99 recurring monthly, and we save the product. And then for our product, we see pricing. So these are the possible plans for the same product, and we need the ID of this one. So price underscore something. We copy that and we paste that into our config of monthly ID. We don't need yearly ID, so we delete that. Short description is, for example, checklister monthly plan, something like this. Name is monthly plan. And we don't need any features here. We don't need any trial here. And this should probably conclude our configuration of Spark. So if we scroll down into the documentation, we go to accessing the billing portal and we just go to slash billing to test it out if it all works. Let's just do exactly that. Let's actually register with a new user with fake filler Chrome extension. We register, we are inside and let's go to slash billing. Okay, I forgot one thing. To use user model as a billable, we need to add some traits here. So in here, yeah, in the user model, we need to add Spark billable here, user model. We open it and we add billable from Spark. That's it. And now let's refresh our billing page. Refresh. 
undefined index features. Okay, so I shouldn't have deleted the features array. It should be still present, but empty. So let's return the features here. Features should be an empty array. So I shouldn't have deleted that. We refresh and we are in the billing portal. So basically in our checklist or inside, all we need to do is provide the link to slash billing and then the user, the customer takes care of all their subscription inside of that separate portal. But that portal is using the user session and the user data from our Laravel application. Convenient, isn't it? Final thing I want to test for now, whether that billing is accessible if we log out. So if we click return to Laravel and then we log out, what would it say if I just go to slash billing? Redirect to login. Okay, so it's powered by the same auth middleware. Great. Now let's actually try to subscribe to the plan. But to do that, Laravel Spark or Stripe or actually Cashier needs to have Stripe webhooks. So what is a webhook? When something happens on Stripe, so some payment, some subscription, some item updated or something like that, Stripe sends the URL, the post request to your URL, to a specific URL, which in our case should be slash spark slash webhook post request with the data and then Spark takes care of updating the subscription in our database according to the changes on Stripe. So you shouldn't update the status of payment or plan yourself. You should post that to Stripe and then Stripe confirms that the credit card is okay, that the balance is okay, and no fraud happens. And then after everything is confirmed, only then they send you the correct data and you pass that in the webhooks. But to test that webhook, we need the URL. If we go back to Stripe dashboard, there are things called webhooks. So developers webhooks, there's one older webhook that I have, and we need to add an endpoint. An endpoint basically is a URL. And how to test that on your local machine, on your local server? There are a few ways. I personally like to test it on remote server, so we will actually upload that to the staging server, which I already have with this client. But if you do want to test that locally, there are a few ways, and Laravel Spark documentation provides them. The tools like ngrok and Expose, they are both free, at least to some extent from what I remember, or Laravel Sale has some feature, which you can kind of use to fake your local server and provide the URL to Stripe and test that. Or as I say, you can test that by uploading your project to the remote server and providing the real webhook. So for that client, I've created a real URL and I will provide exactly that for testing. That may be a tip for you. So whenever I work with client, every client receives their own subdomain with .laraveldaily.com. I don't do client work anymore. These days that checklist is kind of an exception, but still you can just create the testing server, the staging server yourself and do Spark webhook. I think this is the way. Description is irrelevant. And then important thing, what events to send. Events can be all events or you can specify everything. So one by one, this is the events that actually are processed by Spark. So one by one, I will add them. So customer deleted, customer deleted, customer subscription created. And then one by one, I will fill them in with these. So I finished creating the webhook with our events and what we need to do is reveal our signing secret and put that in .env file. So remember in the configuration in the very beginning installation, you need to put some stuff in .env file. Actually, it is configuration here in Spark Stripe. So this is the one, Stripe webhook secret. This is the one that you need to put in your .env file and I will do exactly that. So here we go, the moment of truth, whether it would actually work. So I've uploaded that to the testing server. I register again with a new user and I go to slash billing. Cool, the client has filled some data here already for testing and the Laravel Spark works. And now let's actually try to subscribe by using one of the testing cards from Stripe. The default one is for two, for two, for two, for two, four times. And then any date in the future with any CVC code and we click subscribe. And let's see if it works. And we have everything okay. Payment information, credit card, cancel a subscription. So basically Laravel Spark provides all the billing features like cancel a subscription, like changing the billing information, changing card, like update payment information. For example, you can enter another card and then in your Stripe dashboard, you can see this payment succeeded. Everything is okay and everything is cool in our database actually. Inside of our user table for that new user, we have some Stripe fields with 
the identifier of Stripe ID, we don't save the credit card. That would be a security issue and illegal stuff. So we don't save the credit card details except for last four digits and card expiration date. And then there's also a table of subscriptions. So we have an active subscription for that specific user with ends at null, meaning it's automatically renewing every month until we cancel that. Okay, so after dealing with the Stripe and subscription and Spark, we go back to our Earth, let's put it this way from the Cosmos, and let's implement that button. If you have more than five tasks in checklist, number six and seven and others should be restricted. So I've opened the checklist with six items, and number six should be restricted if I don't have a plan. So let's do exactly that. We have our checklist show live wire component, but it's actually a blade file, so there's not much live wire here. And we have for each list of tasks, basically for each of the tasks. And here, down below, we need to check. So if, and there's a variable, specific variable called loop in Laravel for, for each loops, if loop iteration of that loop equals six, so if we have the six task, we need to show the different and if different line with call span four and text of translated text, you are limited at five tasks per checklist. You are limited at five tasks per checklist. And then the button of unlock all now. Okay, so we'll have a button. And here we have a billing, so slash billing with class of button primary, let's put it this way, the bootstrap class button primary. And again, translated text of unlock all now. So this is the unlock all now button. And for now, let's just refresh the page. We will add a few more conditions, but okay, it is kind of working, but let's make it text center. And let's make this one H3, for example, like this. And we don't need that break then anymore. Refresh again. Okay, looks better. But actually our if is in the wrong place. So if loop iteration is six or bigger, and we need to add that here, so if loop iteration is number six, we show that. Otherwise, we show the other tasks. So else here, and if at the bottom, at the very bottom here. And let's reformat that with PHP Storm automatically. Okay, how does it look now? So we don't show the sixth task. Instead, we're showing the button. And also, it's not really the correct if statement. So else if loop iteration is five or less, so else if is bigger than five or less, so the seventh task wouldn't be shown. But now we just check the amount of tasks, but we don't check the plans. How do we do that? In the Spark documentation under Spark Stripe plans, we can see that we have if auth user subscribed. That's all we need to know, subscribed to a plan. In this case, in our case, it's simple one plan. So what we need to know is subscribed or not. It's basically true or false. So if loop iteration is six and user is not subscribed, I think this is the syntax, okay. Then we show that sixth. Let's try it out. Let's refresh our local checklister. Okay, it works. And then in here, we need to also add if loop iteration is less than five or auth user subscribed, then we show everything. Okay, we don't need that one and let's refresh. Okay, still works. Now let's upload it to the staging server. Here I don't have active subscription and now I will log in with the user who does have that active subscription and we'll test if they see all the tasks. But before that, let's click unlock all now. We go to billing, great, return to Laravel, we are returned. So, okay, now let's upload and commit that code to the repository and I will deploy that and test it out. Okay, I'm logged in on staging with a lot more data and with a lot more tasks. And now I do have subscription. And if I refresh, I should not see that button. I should see everything as a regular user, which is in fact true. But if I try to register as a new user, so register, fake filler again, I register, I go to any checklist. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. Unlock all now. And if we click unlock all now, we land on the billing dashboard. So that's it for this video. We implemented that button of subscribing to a plan via Stripe and Laravel Spark. 
And we're at the final stretch and there are only a few things left to finish the checklist or course and the project for the client. 